الصفا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل آدم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون الحق من ربك فلا تكن من الممتنين فمن حاجك فيه من بعد ما جاءك من العلم فقل تعالوا ندع أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نبتهل فنجعل لعنة الله على الكاذبين إن هذا لهو القصص الحق وما من إله إلا الله وإن الله لهو العزيز الحكيم فإن تولوا فإن الله عليم بالمفسدين صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين سورة آل عمران آية نمبر 59 through 63 is two or three very important احكامات that have been told to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayahs first is to clarify and answer all the um, the ambiguities the questions raised by people about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam especially of the Christians who would want to believe that Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam because he was born without a father they would want to make him given the status of God so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying this inna mathala Isa inna Allahi ka mathali Adam surely the case of Isa in the sight of Allah in the law ka mathali Adam is like the case of Adam khalaqahu min turabin thumma qala lahu kun fayakun he created him from dust he created Adam alayhi salam from dust then he said to him be qala lahu kun he said to him be fayakun and he came to be so when Adam alayhi salam about whom all of you believe that he was born without a mother and a father and you did not nobody agreed nobody ever said that he is God himself when a human is born and he has a mother but no father what is the sense of calling them God or declaring them God inna mathala Isa indallahi ka mathali Adam yes it's a peculiar case but even something more peculiar happened in the case of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam and he was born the real the, the real reason for any creation is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kun and it happens fayakun it comes to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dependent upon the natural <coughs> process Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dependent upon someone having a mother or a father Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create them however they want that does not mean that they become God الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and saying the truth is from your Lord so do not be of those who doubt Al-Hakim al-Ummad Mawana Ashraf al-Sahab al-Thani may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul he is pointed out very clearly and in strong terms in his tafsir that do not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ it does not mean that he is he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thought that the Prophet ﷺ could ever become among the mumtareen, those people who fall in doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the facts about what happened. But this is just a way of reinforcing something. For example, somebody, a teacher, teaches a lesson to a student and although they are sure that this lesson is learned by them, Sometimes just to further emphasize the importance of that lesson, the teacher repeats that lesson or repeats that certain point. So this is that kind of a that that kind of a address. Do not ever be in any doubt. Uh, and do not be of those who doubt. Now from the first ayah that we recited, in the Isa in the Mathali Adam, Ulama Mufassirin have said that this ayat also hints at Qiyas. What is Qiyas? Qiyas is that when something new happens in present day and the clear orders about that are not present in the Quran or the Hadith or the examples of Sahaba, then the ulama who are qualified to do Qiyas and there's conditions for them, 
علمائے مشتہدین دے آر الاؤڈ ٹو فائنڈ آؤٹ اے ویری سملر تھنگ ان دا قرآن اینڈ حدیث اینڈ دے اپلائی دا نالج آف دیٹ ٹو سم تھنگ دیٹ از ٹوڈے فار ایگزامپل دا کیس آف ڈرگس ڈرگس ور ناٹ دیئر ان دا ٹائم آف دا رائے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دے ور ناٹ دیئر ان دا ٹائم آف صحابہ دا علماء آف دس ٹائم ہیو ہیو ڈن اے قیاس اینڈ اپلائی دا سیم رولنگ آف اینی تھنگ دیٹ واز ہارمفل ان دیٹ ٹائم فار ایگزامپل الکوہل دے اپلائی دیٹ رولنگ دیٹ رولنگ آف الکوہل اوور ڈرگس and this is called qiyas that something was very similar was found at that time and there was clear ruling about it so they applied that ruling to something similar that may have occurred after it so in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hinted at qiyas in qiyas in the mathal isa in the law like mathal adam the case of isa alayhi salam is like the mythal like the example of sayyidina adam alayhi salam this is one hint for qiyas to be valid anyway There's so, so many others that uh, also validate the authority of Qiyas. Anyway, coming back. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ So, if someone argues with you, O Prophet, over this, after the knowledge has come to you, So when everything has been clarified and the knowledge has been given and proof has been given, if somebody keeps on arguing and the specific shan in uzul or the specific history of this ayah is that there was a group of people, of Christians in Najran and the Prophet ﷺ had written them a letter and presented three things before them. Either accept Islam or become those who pay jizya or protection money to Muslims and come under the protection of Muslims or be ready for fighting. So they had sent a group. There was, a, there, was, there was three people that they sent, Sharah Bil, his son, and some, one other person. And they had come to the Prophet ﷺ, and they asked the Prophet ﷺ in detail about Islam. Those were Christian people. But when the issue of Sayyidina Isa ﷺ came, they started arguing endlessly. They, started, they kept on arguing and arguing and arguing, and they would not listen. They would not believe. Clear knowledge was given to them. Clear proof was given to them by the Prophet ﷺ, but they did not believe in, in that. So this ayah was descended. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَ وَنَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ That when they keep on fighting with you, someone argues with you, O Prophet, over this, after the knowledge has, been, has come to you, say to him, تَعَالَ وَنَدْعُ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا Let us call our sons. أَبْنَاءَنَا Our sons. وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ Your sons. وَنِسَاءَنَا Our women. وَنِسَاءَكُمْ your women وَأَنفُسَنَا us ourselves وَأَنفُسَكُمْ and you yourselves ثُمَّ then and this is a very specific thing that is done to curb all argument when somebody is not willing to believe anything this is used by our ulama at this time as well and this is perfectly fine in sharia it is called مُبَاهَلَ مُبَاهَلَ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ this is the word of the Quran نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ All of us gather, so we and you and our people, our folks and your folks gather, and then what do we do? We pray. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ We invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the liars. So whoever among, of, among us, whichever side is lying, what, what the method is that they gather together, and they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whoever among us is a liar, finish them off. Curse them. When this... The Prophet ﷺ got this ayah and he did the same thing. He took Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an, who was his son-in-law, so he would be considered his son. He took Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha, who was actually her, his daughter, and took Sayyidina Imam Hussain and Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu, and told, told them to bring their folks and do this in front of everybody. Make this dua that, O oh Allah, whoever among us is the liar, we invoke your curse upon the lying side. These people, deep down their heart, they knew the Prophet ﷺ was the right Prophet. When the Prophet ﷺ said this to them, they all begged out. They all begged out. Sharah Bil told the other two that were with him. He secretly told, told them that this is a true Prophet of Allah. If he invokes the curse of Allah upon us, we are definitely going to be finished off. So don't do this, don't go, don't go to that length. And if you don't want to become Muslims, let's just come under the protection of Muslims and start paying them protection money and come under the protection. 
So this was the second option that was given to them, the Prophet they took their second option. This Mubahala is still valid, but this is something that should be avoided as best as possible. But when an argument between Iman and, and, and Kufr goes to that extent, the ulama use this. And Hakim al-Umat rahimahullah has written that this is perfectly valid. He has used, uh, you know, in technical terms, he has used the proof that why this is valid. For example, there is Li'an. Li'an is something when the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is invoked upon somebody, not going to the details, but somebody proves their, 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 um, their being, being true by invoking the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if I am a liar, may the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon me. So this is called Li'an and this is perfectly 100% valid in Sharia. Similarly, based on that, this and on this ayah, Mubahala is also valid. And the Prophet said at that time that if these people had taken this challenge, these people would have been burned alive there and then. And Hazrat Ulama Kiram have written that if this happens today, when somebody is on the right path and somebody is on the wrong path, and it's a, it's a very serious matter of deen, the ulama, when they consider it appropriate, they do it. Similar thing is possible today as well. And we, there's examples in history when this has actually happened. Anyway, so this is Mubahala. And this is, this is the last effort. This is the last point when somebody is just not willing to, uh, come, to <coughs> come to sense. The major purpose of this is to end the argument. To end the argument. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْقَصَصُ الْحَقُّ وَمَا مِنِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ This is indeed the true narration. وَمَا مِنِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ There exists no God but Allah. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah is surely the Almighty, the All-Wise. فَإِن تَوَلَّوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِالْمُفْسِدِينَ So should they turn back, Allah is fully aware of the mischievous people. Inshallah, we'll start from Ayah 64 tomorrow. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Salatu Wassalamu Ala Sidi Musaleen, Wa Bala Wa Lanna Al-Fusana, Wa Lam Tafil Lana, Wa Tarhamna Lana, Wa Kulla Lana, Wa Lam Khasirin, Wa Lam Tafil Waham, Wa Lam Tafil Wahameen, Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Khayri Khalqih, Sayyidina Wa Lana Muhammad, Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Al-Ma'in, Ameen Bil-Hamdulillah.